Hello guys, welcome. This is Tepika from mytutorialrack.com. Now, in this particular tutorial, we will continue setting up our Einstein bot. So right now, Einstein bot has two main actions. One is to create new case and the other one is to check the case status. Now, when you have to create a new case, bot is going to ask the customer a couple of questions like first name, what's their last name, what's the company, what's the phone number, and what is the case description. All these five questions a bot is going to ask the customer and then based on these customer responses bot is going to create a case in the back end okay so let's go ahead and the first thing is we will go and add a new question here so I'll click on the plus button first we have to deactivate it and then once we deactivate it we will be able to make changes to this Einstein bot now we'll add another question here which is also of the type static so we will go ahead and ask another question and the question is what is your last name the bot is going to ask the customer and then the format is going to be again a text format so I'm going to choose system text here and then I'll create a new variable to store the last name so here the variable is called last name and hit the save so this is the second question bot is going to ask now we'll add another question here question number three it's again a static question plus and then scroll down here and static and the question is what is your company name because that is another thing that we need for the creation of the case and then entity name is text here will provide that it's not a required field but we will want to have as much as information as we can when we create the case the other one is new text variable and this is for company and that's the API name hit save and then the next question is the case description static tell me about your case tell me about the issue briefly okay let's say this one and then this is more of the description it's going to be again a text field and uh, answer is going to be to a new variable and we call this as case description and then next and then save here so this is the third fourth question we are asking and one last question is the phone number so here the phone number and email so we will go ahead and plus here and then static enter your phone number and this one is going to be in a f uh, phone format so here we have something for phone number that way the validation is also going to happen at the same time and we'll create a new variable here for phone number okay so this is for phone number and then hit the save and the next one we have is email so plus and then static message enter your email and then we have is email is the format that we're looking for and then we'll save it in a new variable and this is email now we are going to use all this information while creating the case here so this is all the questions my bot is going to ask the customer so a bot is going to ask what is your first name what is your last name what is your phone number what is your email and what is the case description these are the five things bot is going to ask one by one and whatever the answer customer is going to give or the user is going to give they will store those answers in these variables that we have created now bot has all the information that it needs now we will invoke a flow so how do we invoke a flow when you click on it plus button and if you scroll down there is a flow here that you can invoke now you can invoke a custom flow that you have created or we can also invoke a flow that is already given to us by salesforce it's out of the box and that is for create case when you go and look for 
there is a intro board create case automatically this flow will create a case based on the variables that you will give so we are going to go ahead and click on this one this is a out of the box flow you can create your own custom flow and you can invoke that flow from the bot as well but make sure that flow should be of the type auto launched or screen flow only those two type of the flows you can invoke using this einstein bot now, if you scroll down here, all these are the inputs that this particular case creation requires. It is not a mandatory field, but it is good since we have all these values, we will provide it. Now, we have a variable we created called company, which stores the company name. So that's what we are going to pass. Then for last name, we created a variable to uh, store the last name of the customer. And that is the variable that we are storing. And that is what we will pass for the creation of the case. Similarly, we created a field for the email as well. So whatever customer has sent in the email that is going to be passed for create creation of the case. Then first name is another one. We added a variable, we created one and that's the one we are using. Then issue description, we have created a variable called case description that is for your description of the case. And then one last one is the phone number. Now these are the inputs that our flow requires okay our flow is requiring give me the case information give me your first name give me your last name company phone number and all that information we asked and we passed it to our flow now flow is going to give you two outputs one is the case number you can see here case id and the other one is the case number now if you want these outputs you can store in a variable okay so let's say we want after the successful creation of the case, we want the user to, we will send the user the new case number that we created. Okay. And that way the user will save that case number and next time he can come and check the case status. Now, one last thing we are going to do here is we are going to pro create a new variable and this variable is to store the case ID. That is the variable and uh, this case number will create a new variable to store the case number. So what we have done so far, let's go ahead and make sure we save everything. We have asked the user for a couple of things, first name, last name, email, phone number and company and case description. These are the couple of things that we are asking the customer. Once customer gives these answers, we are saving them into proper variables. Then what we have done is we have invoked a flow and that flow is out of the box, which creates a case. Now, in order to create a case, you need to pass in some information, right? You need to pass in information like for whom the case is, what is the problem with the product, things like that. So we are passing all those values because we have stored those values in the proper variables. Once the case gets created, it returns you two things, the case ID as well as the case number. Now let's say we want our bot to give us our case ID that it created and the case number. How we can do it? We can go ahead and show a message on the screen. The bot is going to show a message. If the case gets successfully created, we'll say message. And what message we are saying? Your case is successfully created created and here is your case number and how do we access the case number by using an exclamation mark and what is the name of the field which has the case number this is the variable that we created is this one case number okay case underscore number so we'll go back here and we'll say case and then space becomes underscore this is the variable that will have the case number and then and your case id is what is the variable which has the case id so if you scroll down here in the outputs case underscore id okay so this is what you have it's going to be case underscore id and then close it okay so your case is successfully created here is your case number and then that's it hit the save button and we will activate it. So now this is the first action that we have set up so far. First thing is we are asking the customer for a couple of questions and then whatever the questions the customer has 
answered we are storing them in the variables and then we are invoking our flow which creates a case and we are passing all these values and it returns you the case number and case id and that case number and case id we are displaying it to our user so now in the next tutorial we are going to preview all of this okay so i'll see you then thank you very much